So nearly last weekend we had a YCS come and go, and it's time to talk about a little bit more of the meta. Now I've kind of I've been doing compilation videos all fucking week, talking about the good, eh, not so good, the tier three, and it's kind of to talk about a little bit of what tops. So the first deck we're gonna be looking at is well that totally awesome frog list everybody wanted. I'm sure it's already out in circulation, but I want to give my opinion on it. We're going to talk about the top 32 pendulum list as well. So, first off, I, I I really am probably going to do a discussion on Trap Trick. This card is absolutely insane and almost warrants a whole video in and of itself just discussing the things you can do with this. This card came out of the gate at $12, um, went down to 11 and then shot back up to nearly... 15 at this point in time. I think a lot of people are underestimating the power that this card does. Like, hello, you can set this. Hello, you can set this. Uh, oh, yeah, we're not playing evenly. But you know what? You can set evenly with this, too. Like, this card is a powerhouse just for the bullshit that it itself can do. I mean, especially when you're in something like Paleo, being able to set... Well, let, let's go through the, the list here. So you can set this card, you can set this card, you can set this card, this card, this card, this card, this card can't set this guy. No, 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 no. I mean, you can set another trap trick, but I mean, I don't know what you're going to do with it. But interesting fun facts, though, like just the power that this card gives to decks, like it's it's actually absurd. So Paleo kind of took advantage of that going into the YCS this past weekend. It was a powerhouse, not only just because Gozen's a very good floodgate, but people are like, oh my god, how's this deck, you know, counteracting the meta? Well, when you have essentially three more of every trap card in your deck, getting to the appropriate one for whatever situation that you need to answer these pesky boards, oh yeah, it's absolutely beautiful. And I will say that power scaling that this deck has now is 95% better than it ever has been so i'm not surprised to see paleo doing so well i know a lot of other people aren't either so let's dig on into this so we have triple of our boy dupe frog. all right so triple dupe frog two copies of loath i think a lot of people have been a little bit the fact that like she does take up a normal summon kind of brings a little bit of people to not like this card but i mean she's still a powerhouse in, in her own right for getting you any essential trap card from your deck like, do people forget that your deck does run on trap power? Two gobbies of Ronin and Toten, very, very simple. And of course, triple swap frog rounding out your complete monster lineup. Like, you don't want to go too crazy on the monsters. And I think, like I said, like, this looks to be about the right ratio. Like, I know builds do play pot. Um, I'm actually surprised that this one isn't. This is just 30 trap cards. So we're playing one copy of Breakthrough Skill, being able to blink a monster, and then being able to get another blink. Uh, isn't too damn bad, actually. Uh, of course, Triple goes to match uh, this card in every matchup besides Thunder Dragons. I mean, even in Thunder Dragons, it's so good because of the clash between dark and light monsters. Uh, they can't have both. So, I mean, it's not a bad counter to that. And then, of course, Triple Heavy Storm Duster. <sighs> God. I, I don't know. I still... This card almost feels like... So when I look at Heavy Storm Duster... It's like, uh, the power of the format kind of changes with it a little bit, and it's like, well, you know, it's not so great, but it's not bad. One copy of Imperial Order, triple Impermanence, triple Lost Wind. I, I do think that Lost Wind also is a little bit of a weird card, but uh, in cases of blinking those monster effects that you don't want to deal with, you, you honestly do need this card. And of course, triple Cadenia, triple Dynamiscus, triple Morella, triple Olenoides, one Swords, of Revealing Light, spiritual version. And of course, triple copies of Trap Trick. Down here in the extra deck, we have one copy of Summon Sorceress, one Star Ruji, one Proxy Dragon, triple Miss Starboy, one Boral Sword, one Boral Load, one Akishik Magician, triple Totally Awesome, two Opabinia, and one Anamalik Kalis. Right, yeah. So deck, very standard actually. We have triple Ash Blossom, triple Ghost Bell, triple Anti-Spell Fragrance, two Dark Bribe, triple mistake and one solemn judgment arena now i don't really find myself ever wanting to play decks like these um i do think they're very good for the stun aspect of what they can do but i do find these to be a bit slower in the current meta and to see that this deck has no essential draw power in it whatsoever kind of detours me away from this list a little bit just because i'm very impartial to things like 
desires, even duality to a little bit of a degree. But you know, I'm not taking anything away from this. The Duelist did fantastic this weekend. Very, very successful. And I know a lot of people have been looking for kind of that clutch to bring Paleo back into the meta because people love this sort of deck. And it's not a bad thing. You know, if we had Harpy's Feather Duster, this deck would not exist in our metagame whatsoever. But to kind of see this deck is kind of a refresher for a lot of duelists. And that means a lot to a lot of players that they get their chance to play, you know, their favorite Paleo deck. So that's Paleo in an essential nutshell. Now I did want to take a look at the top 32 Yes, that's right. Pendulum Magician deck. Now, the first thing that sticks out to me here that I do want to mention, Triple Pendulum Call. Now, we've talked about Pendulum Call in the past, and it's just one giant magnet to attract unwanted Ash Blossoms. Now, depending on when you resolve this in your chain or something like that, um, it can generally work out for you. Um, you know, take it with a grain of salt, but Inherent Egg ones, much like Blue Eyes. I mean, Blue Eyes is still seeing success, even though Melody does get hurt by this. I think the cool thing about this deck, too, is even though Electromite is not limited to one, Lanphonicus just kind of takes that additional spot for you. And you don't really have... Well, you just have to be smart about your Electromites. Like, I do give this deck a lot of shit, but I understand why it's successful in the things that it does, because the deck still does crazy things. Now, another thing that sticks out to me is... Mist Valley Apex Avion. I don't. I can't tell you the last time that I thought that this deck would be playing this, and I understand because of more of essential negates um, being able to also record salt back for you to reuse again next turn. You only get one pendulum, something which means whatever negate you're going to actually burn this on is going to need to be critical. So I gotta give it to Mist Valley Thunderbird. In combo decks like this um, for pendulums, I actually think that this is kind of cool to see this back now. Astrograph is still banned, so I mean, you're kind of making interesting deck choices. Uh, Zingaki's kind of been here for a little while, and then seeing Dragon Pit come back, actually, this is pretty cool. If you have another Magician in your other Pendulum scale, you can discard one Pendulum monster, target spawn, track around the field, and destroy it. Having a little bit of built in destruction isn't banned. Also, this is another essential high scale that you could access to in your deck. Um, actually, this is not a bad call. I actually really like this. Okay, so. Onwards and upwards to the deck. So two copies of Black Fang, high scale. Um, I don't remember the last time I saw three Black Fang in a deck, actually. I was trying to think about No, hasn't been anything. Of course, Triple Chronograph. This literally took the place of Astrograph. Uh, the deck still essentially does what the deck wants to do. You unload your Time Gaze or you go to town. It's also another starter to make sure that you can get into Electromite. You, you can't... <laughs> You can't spam like you used to be able to with Electromites. Now you have to kind of make some bad plays. Of course, Triple Harmonizing Magician. Who doesn't love being able to just use Stepping Stones to get into things? I mean, of course, Ignister and Supreme King Clearwing are still very much cards that you want to abuse against your opponent. Of course, Triple Apex Avion for those additional negates. I mean, what's the craziest board you can get on? Can you get five negates? Do five negate boards actually happen with having three Apex Avion? Pendulum Monster, two other negates. I, I think I'm dreaming. I don't think that actually happens. Two Jackal King, triple Master Cerberus, of course, the engine to start your deck. Two Oath Dragon for general recursion. Two real, or double Purple Poison, low scale for popping. Triple Dark Worm and two Gate Zero. Uh, somebody asked me the other day why a lot of people prefer two Gate Zero. Additional level 7 monsters for overlaying to speed up the process off of Absolute Zero. Also, the fact that it does count as an absolute low scale is actually really good for you. Of course, one time gazer to step. Uh, triple Wisdom Eye, you guys know all about popping, stepping into other scales, loading up that extra deck. Two Zing, or one Zingaki Magician, another low scale. And then, of course, one Dragon Pit Magician for those beautiful destructions. And then, of course, we have two Dragon Shrine for dumping this guy. One Foolish Barrel for dumping this guy. Triple Pendulum Call for searching anything you want. And then, of course, Triple Desires. Because once you start setting up your combo, it doesn't really matter what you draw as long as you're able to kill your opponent. Now this deck is playing one copy of Zephyr Metaltron, one Land Phonicus, one Electromite, one Boral Sword, one Tornado Dragon, one Time Star, one Dark Rebellion, one Absolute Dragon, of course one Silent Honor Arc. Actually, this is this is something very interesting. One Norito, one Abyss Dweller, one Clearwing, one Ignister, of course one F8 Dawn Dragster, and one Odd Eyes Vortex Dragon. Then with Triple Droll, Triple Gamma. One driver, triple hatred nade, two evenly, and triple red reboot, wrapping this bad boy up. Very interesting things going on, 
actually in the metagame, coming out of Niagara Falls this past weekend. And I definitely think that these being the more rogue picks definitely brings a lot to the table for duels to explore. So guys, please, leave a comment down below, tell me you guys think. And well, that's all I got, guys. Peace out. The ride never ends, guys. Make sure you enable those notifications to get the latest videos that are being posted on this channel. Make sure you guys check out Van Cole 40 for my Cardfight Vanguard channel. And join me and House of Champions on the Zodiac Duelist TV Twitch stream. I will be interacting with our audiences. And please check out No Limit Gaming and LGTCG.com for the cheapest trading cards on the market. Thanks for watching, guys, and please have a good day.